I come from the unconscious, which literally is unconscious, the part of us that we do not know in ourselves, the part that can betray us into situations that we would gladly be out of, the part that can push us way beyond what our ego would want to do, and the part, in fact, that our ego cannot control without some kind of discipline and learning how to dialogue with the unconscious forces. The dream is uh, like a, a picture of the unconscious taken from the, from the nightly point of view. In other words, what you do during the day is mirrored in the dreams from the unconscious position at night so that it will appear in consciousness from the ego position in the dream from the soul position. So what we try to do in Jungian analysis is set up a dialogue between conscious and unconscious. If the experience is not coming from the body, it is not known. You can say, I know I am going to die from my head. It's something totally different to be told that you've got six months to live and it's coming from the body that knows it is going to die. So that from, from my point of view, um, to, to work with dreams strictly from the head is to end up with knowledge that is not necessarily going to change your life. If you bring that down into the body, and if you have a jaguar in your dream, and you become the jaguar on the floor and allow that energy to come through. And you think, God, I have got this energy in my body. What is it? I've never experienced this in my life, but, but the dream tells me there's a jaguar energy in me. So that you see uh, something totally other happens when it's experienced at the muscular level. If an addict has a, a dream of a wolf, and I say, well, you know, could you become that wolf? You, you'll see them magnificently going around the floor with the pads on the feet, and, and, and they quite enjoy this immense energy of the wolf, and they'll move into it more and more. The wolf is the animal of Apollo, a very intelligent animal. But its weakness is greed. It wants something. Often it doesn't know what it wants. It wants, it's an energy that wants more and more and more. Now, if that goes on a negative direction, it wants more food, more alcohol, more sex, more, more money, more of anything that is concrete. If it goes in a spiritual direction, it can be extremely creative. So you see, all these archetypes have two sides. And if you get on the concrete side, you, it's a perverted energy. If you can get on the spiritual side, it's creative. I believe that God is the maker of dreams and that we all have a destiny, as in the world of the Tao. Our task is to try to find what our destiny is. And rather than allow ourselves to be taken off our own path by our own overwhelming ego, we try to find the path that we are to live. Wholeness comes from the totality of our person, of our being, and you have to have consciousness and unconscious in harmony. And I knew that mine were not in harmony. Well, I use the word masculine and feminine to describe two energies. And I do not, <clears throat> do not make masculine synonymous with patriarchal. For me, patriarchal has become a parody of masculinity. It is a control issue. Control over other people, control over their own body, which will create the addiction, or power over nature. That's patriarchal. That is not masculine. Um, 
And this is not a new idea. I mean, in the Hindu world, they call it Shiva Shakti. Right. In the Chinese world, it's yin yang. In the religious world, it's transcendence and, uh, or eminence and transcendence. But I use these two words, masculine and feminine. I tried to get away from them. But I interpret dreams. So what I'm looking for in a dream is the balance of these two energies. And if that energy balance is out, then the personality is moving towards sickness. Tell us then about the feminine qualities. I would see the feminine as um, process instead of product. Um, presence, being present here and now. Not thinking about the future, not thinking about the past, but being here. That's something that's almost unknown in our culture. Receptivity, resonance, uh, recognizing the rightness of something because it resonates in the body to the point, for example, where you get goose flesh. You mm -hmm. say, yeah, that's it, I got it. On the other side, what are some of those masculine qualities that are within us all? The, the real masculine, discrimination, discernment, uh, looking at a goal, having the action that will move towards that goal, mm -hmm. uh, honoring the feminine, cherishing, working in harmony with it, creative, immense creative energy, which works, of course, with the creativity of the feminine. The two work together. You, you have to have both energies, as we have to have day and night. It's essential that both sides are working together for new life. If you believe yourself to be perfect, you believe yourself to be a god, and that is stupid. If you try to live up to what your parents may have put upon you, you know, that you are the darling little boy, or you are the darling princess, you are going to look for a god, for a partner, and you are going to think of yourself as some kind of special creature. And sooner or later, that is going to collapse. I mean, you just have to look at the fundamentalists. It leaves the whole human side, which is not perfect, unlooked at. And sooner or later, that great energy will just come up and say, OK, look at me. So that you can strive for light and spirit and beauty and truth all day go to sleep at night, and the addictive energy comes up. What do you do if you love that dark side? In, in practical well, terms, dark, just come to accept it? You say, well, that's me. Yeah, but the dark side is beautiful. The feminine can be very cruel if you do not honor her, as the masculine be, can be cruel if it's not honored. But to love the, the juicy side of life, I mean, you know, it's to put a Madonna up on top of a pedestal, all white and all perfect and all nourishing, cherishing mother, that's to make her a goddess up on top of a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being a human being who loves being in the body, who loves to see the glory of spring, hear the glory of the birds, taste the glory of good food, to live the sexuality, you know, to know what it is to be human and love it instead of trying to be a spirit that's going to take off in a UFO to go to heaven. The other side of the virgin on the pedestal is the Mary, Mary Magdalene. Sure. And people don't mention that they have the other archetype, but many, many men have a wife and a mistress. And many women are equally split. They have, they have an, one attitude towards themselves as wife and mother, a very a different attitude toward themselves uh, sexually. The Judeo-Christian tradition has left the feminine right split down the middle so that we have the, the virgin and the whore. And that's in individuals. It is also in the culture. In the man, it can be split between the father and the Don Juan. 
where the what you call the dark side is rejected, it will also manifest in the culture. So that it there's something wrong with in our culture with being earthy, with being um, you know really loving the body, honoring the rhythms of the body. Most people just think you're slow, a little bit stupid, and somewhat naive if you honor the, the body. I really do believe in the evolution of consciousness. And I do believe that there is a God, goddess, that the two together, I mean. I, don't, I do not believe it's possible to separate the two. Mm -hmm. I think of God as a spirit and goddess as the manifestation of spirit. And you have to have both in order for either one to exist in, in our mentality, in our visualization. So I, I see these archetypes that are beginning to come in hundreds of dreams, thousands of dreams from all around the world, as the God trying to balance the feminine energy that has been lost right around the planet. The whole planet is into power. So how are we ever going to bring the feminine? Because you see, if you, I mean, I've tried it in many meetings. I will say, look, I think we're going too fast here. Can we just please stop and look at what we're doing? And there's always that, oh, it's Marion again. And we'll just have to wait for her poor thing to catch up to where we are. I'm just sick of that attitude. Because what's happening, the mind is racing so far ahead of where the body is, and the body holds the feeling. So that you race in order to obliterate feeling. Then it ceases to be human. I mean, the Nazis were a wonderful example. And it's now in our culture. You, you can just race to the point where there is no feeling, there is no humanity. The body moves much more slowly. And I think people who, want, who feel the feminine feel more than understand. It's feeling it. Your heart breaks when you see what people are doing to their own body, to their own children. I mean, What's happening in the schools, you know, where the creative world is being taken away because there is no funding for the creative arts, music, drama, and so on. And children are therefore taken away from their imagination. They're not given a chance to explore that. They're not given a chance to explore their creative efforts. So that that immense energy which yearns for the creative, which is the masculine and feminine working together, mm -hmm. where the soul is given a chance to expand and to be, there is no room for that. But there's lots of money to build prisons. If they come out, if society we, we do recognize the divine and feminine more, what would change? How would society be different? There would be much less action, a great more deal more faith in being. So many people, uh, if I say to them, if they're divorced, and I say, well, why don't you just spend an evening with music in your apartment? They say, there's nobody there. I, I turn the lock, and it's just a black apartment. And I say, but you're there. Well, I'm nobody. That's the feeling. So that the sense of being someone, the beingness is the feminine. And the, the masculine takes that being into the world or at, into deeper levels of, of faith. It goes both directions, actually. Um, and people would love their own creativity. They would honor the imagination that would, would allow them to create and express themselves. They would honor the earth. They would, 
they would be able to relate without having to have power over. I mean, the whole world would just be turned upside down, that's the truth. Because they, people wouldn't have agendas for their children. You know, that the child should be this. It would mm -hmm. take out the should, ought, and have to. So that the child would be given a place to flourish in its own personhood instead of trying to please somebody else. Because once you start a life of trying to please somebody else, then your whole life becomes pleasing somebody else until you have no life of your own at all. As women, for example, we find our femininity, we find the voice which is connected to the depths. So instead of a voice coming from up here like this, like a little girl's voice, the, verse, the voice comes from the depths of the womanhood. And when that happens in dreams, a brand new masculinity comes in to partner that. And the same thing happens in a man. The more, the more masculine he becomes, the more the feminine begins to manifest in dreams.